Okay, we have another one that we want to we want to find the information here. We also want to graph. So I have y equals two x minus three squared x plus four squared. We want to fill in this information. Uh, there's only two blanks for zeros because in this case there's only two factors. So first of all, the first one, the two here, I can't have a zero on that one that, because I can't set two equal to zero. Two is never going to be equal to zero. So because it's not, that's why I'm not going to have any zero for that one, but I will have some for these two here. What makes that one zero is going to be three, so I'll put three right here. Uh, for the other one, it's going to be negative four. Next, you want to indicate the multiplicities. Okay, so multiplicities for each one of these, there's, there's twos on both of those. So now we have that. Okay, uh, the degree. Degree is going to be the sum if we, we want to add the multiplicities together. So that's always how you find a degree. You add these two numbers together. So that's going to give you four. The max number of turning points will be one less than that. That's going to be three. Okay, next we want to do the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where you put in a zero for x. It's not going to automatically be zero on this one because I don't, I don't have an x on the outside. If you have an x in front of everything, then yeah, that's going to cancel and give you a zero. But in this case, we have to put zero in uh, for each of these. So I'm going to do 2 times 0 minus 3 squared and 0 plus 4 squared. So 0 goes in there for all the x's. We'll simplify it. 2 times 9 times 16. Okay, so that's going to be 144 times 2, it's going to be 288. So it's going to cross here, way up there at 288. Okay, next, I want to find my behaviors. The behaviors you're going to have at each one of the individual zeros. So I want to do that over here. So first of all, I'm going to do the behavior at 3. The behavior, again, is the equation that the graph resembles when it crosses the axis at that particular zero. So I want to find out what equation it looks like at three. Okay, so three, what you do for this behavior is you put three into only the second one. You don't want to put a three in the middle one, otherwise it'll cancel out and give you a zero. You're putting three into the second one. Okay, so what it looks like is y equals two, I'm not going to put anything in the first x, but I will put a 3 into the second x. Okay, so I get this. I'm going to simplify this one. Okay, this is going to give me 7 squared is 49. And then we multiply that by 2, you get 98. So 98 x minus 3 squared. That's going to go in here. 98 times x minus 3 squared. You don't need to simplify, or you don't need to multiply all that out. You can leave your answer uh, just like this. So, what kind of graph is that going to look, is that going to resemble? Well, the main thing I want to recognize is I have a square on that. And if we go back to the library of functions graph that we talked about before, that means that whenever you see a square, that's going to resemble a parabola. So it's going to look like a U uh, opening up. Okay, if there was a negative sign in front of that, that would be a parabola that would be opening down. But in this case, a positive one means it's going to be opening up. So the graph will look like this when it crosses through at 3. Look like a U. Okay, so now we're going to do the behavior at negative 4. Okay, so negative 4, we're going to put that in the first one only, but not the second one. Okay, so that's going to be 2, negative 4, minus 3 squared. And then the other one we're going to leave alone. We'll leave that as x plus 4 squared. When you simplify the first part, you get Negative 7 squared is still going to be 49 times 2. You're still going to get the 98 again. So you get another one where you have a parabola shape. So 98 x plus 4 squared. That's another one that's going to resemble a parabola that's opening up. So at each of these zeros, at 3, I'm going to make a dot right there. And at negative 4, I'm going to make a dot. So I know that it's going to cross and it's going to look like a U at both these places. Way up here, it's going to be at, this is at 288. That's where the graph is going to cross. So now all I have to do is I have to figure out what the end behavior is going to be on this one. So if I do end behavior, okay, first of all, on this particular problem, my degree uh, is 
It's an even one this time because my degree is four. So degree is gonna be even, and I also wanna find out my A of N. Okay, now if I were to multiply this part out, I have a one inside there, I would get a one in front of the X, there's a two there, there's a one in front of this X as well. All I'm concerned about, whether the A of N is positive greater than zero or negative less than zero. Because all the numbers in front of the x's, if everything is all positive, that means your a of n is going to end up being positive as well. So a of n is going to be greater than zero. The model that I have in the notes are those four models I showed you that depends on the degree, even or odd, and also the a of n greater than or less than zero. From the notes, it says that the n behavior is going to look like that. The graph is going to go up and go up in both directions, so I know that i will erase these so it's not confusing. I'm going to put an arrow here and another arrow uh, there. So then when I connect it, the graph is actually going to look like a big W. It's going to go down and look something like this. Graph will come down, it'll hit this, go through 288, come back down and go through. Something about multiplicities I'll tell you as well. Sometimes you might see a question that'll say, uh, is the x-intercept going to touch the graph uh, or pass through? And that's what you're going to use the multiplicity for. So at the zero of three, if the multiplicity is even, that means the graph is going to touch and it's going to reverse and go in the opposite direction. If the multiplicity is odd, we don't have that in this problem, but if the multiplicity was odd, that means it would actually cross. It would cross the x-axis uh, at that particular zero. So in this case, because both of the multiplicities are even, that's why you see it changing directions at both places. It happens whenever multiplicities are even. It will touch only. It will touch at that point, but it will bounce and turn and go in the other direction.